Hey traders, trading man Dan at the chart guys checking in on the market. So further follow through for the bears on the morning. We did end up seeing an hourly bounce take place. Netflix earnings reaction after hours. We'll check in on that and some clues for the tops and bottoms of today. They were wedges. So we were watching a five minute falling wedge on QQQ. And that marked the low of the day. I was posting these in the chat room and on Twitter as they were shaping up. So that was the initial sign of the bulls. And then they confirmed this 15 minute inverse head and shoulders. So that falling wedge marked the low of the day. And then you had spy on the five minute time frame hitting hourly EMA 12. Actually, we got over hourly EMA 12, but it was still a five minute rising wedge that broke bare and marked the high of the day into the close. So I used those signals not necessarily to trade QQQ and SPY themselves, but in alignment with the other trades that I was taking at that point in time. I was watching the biotech sector on the bull side of things. I was watching MARA and Riot, those crypto stocks, still great volatility in both directions. But overall, we have to see the SPY bulls regain an hourly uptrend, which means holding the low of today and breaking the high of today if we're going to say that a daily higher low is set. And then we'd be keeping an eye out for anything under 423 cents to just be a daily lower high. What a bear wants to see from here, the ideal bear path forward, we still have not confirmed an hourly downtrend on SPY. Granted, the bears have seen significant follow through from the drop from 400, but it was all a waterfall drop. So the bears need to confirm an hourly downtrend by breaking the low of today tomorrow. And then the next time we bounce on the daily, they need to confirm a daily downtrend. And then they would have complete control from that point forward. So those are two things that the bulls, nope, that the bears want to see from here. And of course, what the bulls want to see is the confirmed hourly uptrend to set the daily high or low and try and get that bounce going. QQQ, very similar, not much difference. We are still holding daily EMA 12. That is one difference. And if we look at QQQ divided by SPY, we can see that we're just starting to see a little relative weakness today on this pullback. Same thing though, QQQ needs the hourly uptrend to confirm for the daily higher low to be set. At this point in time, the retracement here is still less than 50%. So again, there are no major red flags, but if we were to break the low of today tomorrow, then we would start getting some of those red flags as the retracement size would be 50% plus. The dollar is remaining weak. Again, the bounce yesterday, we, we are not confirming the four hour uptrend. When's the last time we saw a four hour uptrend? It's been since this bear flag back a couple weeks ago. So topped out on the bounce, gave it all back. Can we change the trend? No, we failed. So bear's still in complete control. And even when we do bounce next, we'll be watching for a daily lower high to be the result of that bounce. So dollar bulls still not proving much as far as any follow through. So we can look at that and say, well, the broader market bears are positioned well if the dollar gets any bounce going. We can also look at this and say, the dollar's not bouncing. I'm gonna be looking for the broader market bulls to try and set these daily higher lows. But I personally, I'm not paying as much attention to the dollar on a day by day, on an intraday basis. I'm just watching the hourly trends on SPY and QQQ as my guide. Tesla. <clears throat> so Tesla pulling back on the daily. Anything above 115.60 will be a higher low. And the hourly is our guide. Nice bounce on the hourly. Again, need that uptrend. If we confirm the hourly uptrend tomorrow, the daily higher low will be set and we'll be looking back at the bounce high of 136.68. So no major red flags in this pullback. You can see it's very minimal still at this point. So Tesla bulls holding on fairly well. NVDA started to follow through with that daily consolidation, which was minimal yesterday, but certainly a bit more notable today, down three and a half percent. Still watching EMA 12 on the daily, hourly oversold conditions led to a bounce, but if the low of today breaks tomorrow, it'll be the hourly oversold conditions not marking the daily higher low, which will tell us that is not the ideal scenario for the bulls. Could this be a cup and handle? The psychology is still there. We rejected from resistance a bit further away than bulls would like to see. They would have liked that to have been a bit closer, but 
Still possible to be a bull flag. We did close near the low of the day, so it's certainly not something that I'm confident in or actively scouting for, but just aware that it is a possibility. SMH, a little bit better of the setup just because this resistance level was a bit closer. So if we were to see a green day tomorrow, then I'd start paying attention. Okay, maybe it is a cup and handle, but not until then. Financial sector remaining a lead bear, so rolling over notably into weekly consolidation. So if we're viewing this now as a low, high, higher low, lower high, and anything above 33.19 would be another weekly higher low. Daily time frame showing us a bounce attempt. Again, need the hourly uptrend. That's all I care about tomorrow. Can bulls confirm hourly uptrends? If they can't, the bears keep complete short-term control. Netflix earnings, the reaction is bullish. We're giving a lot of it back, but it is still green at the moment. And so because of that, we've got SPY up a bit after hours, QQQ up, not notably, and Netflix, if we keep fading here, it's just going to be an uneventful earnings reaction. Right now, we're trading just above the high of the day. So initially a spike, but giving a lot of that back, and we still have the conference call to go. And anything under 336.65 would be a daily lower high. That's going to be a key resistance level we're watching tomorrow. Healthcare sector. So again, we keep hitting these fresh lows without a whole lot of follow through, but we've got daily lower highs as our guide. So we topped out on the initial bounce, lower high, lower high, lower high. So anything under 135.86 would keep those daily lower highs going. And again, it's not, we're not seeing the healthcare sector have much impact because of the range the last couple of weeks is not significant. This is a big range. This is a big range. This is not a big range. So it's not really having much impact, but the bears have the advantage as long as the daily lower highs continue to form. IWM following through from its double top rejection, daily EMA 12 support test. If the bulls can confirm the hourly uptrend tomorrow, the daily higher low will be set holding EMA 12. And again, you look at the retracement size here from where we came from and it is still healthy at this point, which is why if I'm a bear, I want to see SPY confirm that hourly downtrend for one more leg down. Because if we see one more leg down, then these names start to have a whole bunch of space for daily lower highs to be the result of the next bounce. There is still space for the potential of daily lower highs to be the result of the next bounce, but one more lower low increases that probability significantly. Biotech sector. So trying to bounce off the daily EMA 12. This was a great example of, look at this previous resistance. We know we've been, we were watching this resistance day after day, 84 even, 84.18, 84.09, 83.99. This was the level to break and we broke it and we followed through significantly. Look at the back test, perfect back test by two pennies. So previous resistance acting as support, we tested that in five and 15 minute and hourly oversold conditions. So multiple timeframes aligning oversold testing that key level. And we bounced notably off of it. And I ended up giving up this five minute inverse head and shoulders attempt too soon. That was the bull break taking place. And I was out, this was a rising wedge that did confirm, but not much follow through on it. So I was out up here and I missed the second leg up of this move. You can see the bulls were much more convincing this two hour period than we were this two hour period. But same thing, need the hourly trend change to the bulls for the daily higher low to be set and for us to be looking back up towards recent resistance. Crypto names, MARA, small gap down open. Took this trade on the morning. This was a little two minute cup and handle. Where is my cup and handle? Right there. Okay. So it was the high of the day. We pulled back here, 675 support held. Rejected from the high of the day. As soon as I saw this forming as a bull flag, I make my entry 
I think I got filled maybe 704. I would exit if 697 breaks because I know if the double top at the high of the day breaks, we likely get a decent bit of follow through, which we did. And then I was scaling out on this move. Just a little quick day trade to set the tone on the morning. But overall, crypto bulls are holding on much better than stock market bulls. You look at this consolidation in Bitcoin. I mean, it's a daily bull flag trying to form. And so there's a ton of crypto names where this consolidation is still very healthy overall. So keeping an eye out for clues there, but that definitely helped the bounce today. And again, the volatility is still just absolutely beautiful on these names from the low of the day, MARA up 14%. Again, it's all about the meat in the middle, but we set this hourly higher low inside bar bull break. That was a signal at $7 and we quickly go up 6% from there. That was another trade that I missed today, scouting that hourly higher low, essentially got bored and took my eye off it, which is never a good thing. Definitely don't want to be trading if you're bored though. So we just tightened up and then that bull break was the hourly higher low being set. You can see the bull volume coming in off of that. And so overall, crypto bulls are keeping their control. But at this point, I am looking for a four hour lower high on MARA. And you can see on the morning, I watch MARA and Riot all week. And you can tell pretty quickly in the morning who's stronger and who's weaker. And today, Riot was clearly weaker. So when I was looking short on these names, I was choosing Riot. And Riot was up 1.2%, while MARA was up 6.2%. Huge difference. But look at the difference right here. So we have the high of the day. And I top fished right here. I shorted at 585. And I put my stop at 590 or 591, I think, to give some wiggle room. But if I were choosing MARA on that same trade, I would have stopped out because we broke the high of the day with 3% of follow through. Whereas Riot broke the high of the day, pulled back, I exit half the position. And then into the end of the day, I exit the second half. It wasn't a big trade by any means. It was just a small little icing on the cake day or trade, I should say. But that's important because if I choose the stronger name, I stop out. And if I choose the weaker name, I don't stop out. So the, the path for me this week has been identifying who's stronger, who's weaker. And then when I'm looking for a bull setup, I choose a stronger and vice versa. Some of the other high volatility names. So cannabis names, we're watching for weekly tops to be set. TLRY, weekly EMA 12 resistance and rejection. Daily time frame pulling back notably from this top. Again, already pulling back over 10%. Still technically a daily uptrend, but watching for signs of topping out. And so if we were to pull back a bit more, we would create the space to scout a daily lower high. To be the result of the next bounce, we look at CGC, it's very similar. And MSOS, the US cannabis names, very weak. Top of the bounce, 736. We failed by six pennies yesterday. We broke support today. And the only support is down at 636 the all-time low. Psychedelic name, MNMD, holding gains well, daily inside bar. Again, if, if that's the consolidation, that's very healthy. EMA 12 on the daily is, is my guide on many names as to whether or not the consolidation is remaining healthy. And the other names, GME, a lot of bear follow through. AMC, not quite as much. So overall, another win for the bears, two days in a row here. Hourly trend change burden on bulls tomorrow. We are scouting daily higher lows in many names. And that's that. Miners. Forgot the metals and the miners. Gold back to a new high. Daily bull flag confirmed after failing yesterday. Again, the lack of any bull follow through on the dollar is keeping these metal bulls confident. But gold is now at weekly RSI of 70. And that's where we topped out last time. So keeping that on watch, we got a weekly stair step pattern the last two months. Bulls have complete control as long as daily EMA 12 is support. Silver held support. It's range bound. Waiting for a break. We've been range bound for a month here at this point. Miners trying to bounce on the daily EMA 12. This is a daily bull flag. The simple statement is the miners are daily bull flags unless the low of consolidation breaks. So if I'm looking to play a bull flag, just like that two minute MARA trade on the morning, if I'm looking to play a bull flag, I put my stop under the low because if the low breaks, then my thesis of it being a bull flag is wrong. 
So it's a daily inside bar but still very healthy overall as long as daily EMA 12 is support. Oil is staying healthy, trying for the quick high or low. And with that, the energy sector bulls bought the dip from the gap down open significantly, but no red flags on oil. Again, as I talked about yesterday, if daily EMA 12 holds, we, we want to dumb down trading and technical analysis as much as we can to make it simple. It's just a simple statement. If daily EMA 12 is holding, then the bulls are keeping control. And that can help with my perspective on the direction to be watching. We got natural gas still puttering around, trying to bounce, but still failing to do so. Again, after my attempt yesterday, I'm not interested looking long because all I have is a 12 hour downtrend with EMA 12 resistance. And I don't have anything that tells me that a bottom is being set right now. We certainly can see the RSI drop lower. So the first time it looks like we're gonna get over or the first time we do start to get over 12 hour EMA 12, I'll start to get interested. But until then, it's just full bear control for me. All right. Do good things, appreciate you watching. Thanks for the likes and the shares and subscribes. I'm about to do a course webinar in 20 minutes. Maybe I'll see you there. Adventure time, a million and a half. We're going to Fifth Water Hot Springs in Utah. And it's a really cool spot. This is walking up to it and this is a river. It looks like you're playing putt-putt mini golf, but it's just the minerals and sulfur in the water, making it that aqua blue with a bunch of different little pools that people have you know, established rocks around to make different depths and different temperatures. And again, just another one where you hike up a few miles and you camp. And yeah, there's a bunch of people there in the middle of the day, but if you are there at sunset when it's dark or you're there first thing in the morning really it's first thing in the morning because people will stay up late but if you wake up with the sun and you go somewhere you want to be alone you're usually going to be alone there's usually not many other people that are going to wake up that early so just a nice river in a nice little canyon with trees and a nice little soak from there went to arches national park and arches is right near canyonlands national park so if you do one you got to do the other went to Arches and then Canyonlands and had some nice memories. I remember I took a shower in a downpour where I was sitting in my car and it was pouring rain and I hadn't showered in a while and I figured might as well bust out the Bronners and shower in the downpour. So I did that, camped just outside of the park. Don't think they're actually, no, I camped in the park. That's right. So there's just a bunch of arches and it's just the way that the wind erodes the sandstone which is pretty soft. You know, you could definitely chisel away with it with a chisel, but it's all different kinds of formations and nice vast expanses and red rocks and interesting. That's going to fall sometime soon, you got to figure. But just a cool spot with a bunch of arches. So I ended up picking a spot to camp on by just walking towards the end of the trail and being alone and on some rocks and waiting for the sunset. There's me. And it looked like it was the Lion King in terms of the vast African expanse, but it's not. That's where my tent was. And for the sunset, there was some actually some cool rounded rocks that I was sleeping on. And again, definitely need an inflatable air mattress when sleeping on rocks. There's also nowhere to stake in your tent. So I had to put my water jug on one end and my bag on the other to keep the tent expanded. But again, it's the kind of thing where if you're camping out in the open like that exposed, you're going to wake up with the sun. You know, it's going to be shining right on you. And that gets you starting the day before everybody else. And I find that in the last few years, as I've really been smashing it with all my effort and time into trading, that getting up before the sun every day, including most weekend days, allows me to get a ton accomplished while everybody else is just waking up. So if you want to get ahead of the game, put in more time and effort and wake up early. There's the sunset and that's it. We're going to go to Canyonlands. Next Canyonlands is an epic place. Encountered some cool people there and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Adventure time number million. We got, where are we? We are in fifth fall, fifth, shut up. 
Shut up.